the following question reads uh, that zinc reacts with aqueous nickel nitrate uh, so zinc reacts with nickel nitrate uh, displaces nickel uh, probably because it's more reactive than nickel and zinc nitrate is formed and nickel is displaced solid nickel is formed by referring to the equation explain why this is a redox equation uh, why reduction and oxidation are happening in this reaction the first thing is i'm going to look at the oxidation states zinc over here is neutral so that uh, is that means it it has zero charge nickel over here is bonded to nitrate uh, nitrate has a charge no3 has a charge of minus 1 and there are two nitrates so that's a total of minus 2 so nickel must be plus 2 and similarly over here zinc is plus 2 because nitrate over here is minus 1 and there are two nitrates so balance the charges zinc must be plus 2 and nickel metal over here is again neutral it's uh, so it, it has zero charge so what's happening over here is zinc goes from 0 to plus 2 which means that it loses two electrons on the other hand, nickel was plus 2 initially and now it's neutral, which means that it's gaining 2 electrons. So whenever there's a loss and gain of electrons, it's going to be a redox equation. So your answer is going to be that zinc is going from zinc plus 2, uh, zinc uh, neutral to plus 2, so it's losing 2 electrons. And if it's losing electrons, it's getting oxidized, whereas nickel went from plus 2, gains 2 electrons to form nickel. So it gains two electrons, gets reduced. So you can, uh, instead, you can use words to describe instead of writing an equation of what's happening. You can use words. You can say that zinc lost two electrons and got oxidized. Nickel gained, uh, nickel plus two gained two electrons and eventually got, re uh, got reduced. In the next part of the question, part two, we need to construct the ionic equation for this reaction. So I have this equation over here and I need to construct the ionic equation. Now the rule for constructing an ionic equation is that uh, whenever your uh, whenever a compound is in aqueous state these two compounds are in aqueous state uh, what happens in aqueous state is that the ions are going to dissociate which means uh, nickel ions and nitrate ions are going to mix in water and they're going to uh, they would they would be separate they would uh, dissociate they would break down in in water and they would all be swimming ar around in separate directions so this over here is what uh, nickel nitrate looks like uh, uh, the blue dots are water molecules and nickel nitrate when it's mixed in water it's going to dissociate and the ions are going to just mix with water and they would be moving in different direction mixing sliding slip and sliding over water molecules uh, but they would not be in combined they would not be combined they would not be together so i'm going to write this equation in dissociated form so i have uh, exactly done that uh, zinc was solid so i've uh, taken the solid as it is uh, Nickel nitrate was aqueous, which means that the ions are going to break down and they're going to dissociate and mix in water. So nickel ions and nitrate ions would be separate. So instead of uh, the two ions, the nitrate ions combined together, you write the big two over here, which means that they are now separate. Uh, so nickel nitrate is in aqueous state, dissociated state. Zinc nitrate produced is also in aqueous state or dissociated state. So I have, uh, I have dissociated it as well. And nickel solid is formed, which is going to remain just a solid. So this is the equation written in dissociated form. Only the aqueous substances are written in dissociated form. Now what I need to do is I need to find spectator ions. They are the ions which did not undergo any change. So you can, you can look at zinc over here. Zinc was neutral. Now it's plus 2. So that means it underwent a change. It, it uh, underwent a reaction. Uh, nickel was plus 2. Over here nickel is a solid. So that also underwent any, uh, some sort of change. It got reduced. Uh, but over here, if you look at nitrate, NO3 minus 1, and in the products, you still have NO3 minus 1 in aqueous state, which means nitrate ions are not doing anything. They're not even taking part in the reaction. Uh, so they are spectator ions, and you're going to cut these spectator ions out. You're going to remove the spectator ions. If you remove the spectator ions, the leftover equation is going to be your ionic equation. Uh, so your ionic equation is going to be zinc, solid, plus nickel, plus 2 ends up forming zinc plus 2 aqueous state and nickel solid. So this uh, without the nitrate uh, is going to be your ionic equation. Let's move to the next part uh, of the question, which now states uh, that you need to draw a label diagram to show how a fork made of nickel is electroplated with silver. To electroplate an object, three things must be followed. Uh, the first thing is that the object to be electroplated is always placed at the cathode uh, so this is the this is the fork uh, that has been 
placed and it's placed at the negative end. Uh, you connect it to the negative terminal of the battery. So this is your cathode. Uh, so it's supposed to be placed at the cathode. The other rule is that electroplating metal is made anode. The electroplating metal, metal because uh, we need to electroplate it with silver. So the metal, silver, is uh, going to be placed at the anode, uh, the positive terminal of the battery. So this is the, this is the anode. And the last thing is that the solution must contain ions of the electroplating metal. So, so the solution must be a salt that contains silver ions. So it could be silver nitrate, aqueous, or any salt that is soluble and has silver ions. So you need, you need silver ions in the solution for electroplating to happen. And you also need to explain how uh, electroplating would happen. So the first thing is that the positive terminal of the battery, it pulls away electrons from the silver metal. So silver would start uh, losing electrons, it would start losing electrons and it would start forming silver ions. So silver ions would be produced and those silver ions would mix in the solution. So the solution is going to have lots and lots of silver ions. Uh, some of the silver ion is already present in the solution because the solution already is silver nitrate aqua. So there, there would be Ag plus 1 ions present in the solution. But a lot of Ag plus 1 ions would be, would be produced uh, when the silver metal dissolves. And these silver ions, they will be attracted to the negative cathode. And when these uh, silver ions reach the negative ca uh, cathode, the battery would be providing electrons and the silver ions would be gaining those electrons. Uh, so over here, the reaction that's going to happen is silver ions would be gaining electrons back to form silver back again. So, so the fork is going to, uh, it's going to get electroplated. A coating of silver metal would start forming on the, on the fork. So this is what's happening over here. Silver would lose electrons to form silver ions. It will get oxidized. The battery is going to take away all the electrons. So positive ions would be produced in the solution and when those positive ions reach the negative cathode, uh, the electrons would be coming from the battery and the silver ions would start gaining those electrons back and silver metal would be produced back again. Now moving to the next part of the question which states that aqueous ammonia is added uh, with mixing to a solution containing zinc ions until no further change occurs. What observations would be made during this test? So uh, this is going to be a test for zinc ions. Uh, uh, when, you uh, when, you, when you mix zinc ions uh, and you add ammonia, what happens is, so white precipitate is formed when a few drops of ammonia are added. And this white precipitate of zinc uh, is going to dissolve in excess ammonia to form a colorless solution. So, so this is a test for uh, zinc cations that you must remember. Moving to the next part of the question, which is, uh, Next part of the question is, uh, you're given uh, blocks of zinc are attached to the underside of ships made of iron to stop them from rusting. Explain how zinc stops the ship from rusting. First thing is, I've written down the reactivity series and uh, you would notice that zinc is, uh, is higher up in the reactivity series compared to Fe. So zinc, as you move down the reactivity series, the reactivity decreases. So zinc is more reactive than iron. That would be your first point. So the answer is going to be that zinc is more reactive than Fe and uh, if zinc is more reactive, zinc is going to have a higher tendency to lose electrons. Metals always like to lose electrons, so zinc is uh, more reactive, it loses more electrons more easily and it's going to get oxidized in preference to Fe. So, so, the, so the oxidation of zinc uh, would, uh, the possibility of oxidation of zinc would be higher compared to Fe. So this is called sacrificial protection which is why Fe will not rust and zinc is going to rust in its place.